As it says in the title, I've managed to render 40,000 interactive blades of grass in real time using Python and Pygame because I wanted performant grass for a game I'm working on. I figured I'd make this video to 1. serve as an example of why Python isn't slow for game dev, and 2. to give a good example of how you can optimize visual effects in Python. Every blade of grass in the simulation is individually interactive. They are all affected by wind as well. The implementation is using the default CPython interpreter that almost everyone uses. It's the one you get from the Python website. I could probably make it faster if I used a Python compiler like PyPy, but I really don't need more than 40,000 blades on the screen at any time anyways. On the Pygame side of things, I'm using Pygame 2, which has rendering that's almost twice as fast as Pygame 1.9.x on most applications. From past experience, I'd estimate that the rendering setup in this specific application is on the lower side, but I can't say for sure since it doesn't run in Pygame 1.9.x for other reasons. As you can probably tell, my example isn't the 40,000 blades from the title. I haven't shown it yet because it requires some effects turned off and it doesn't look as nice. Here's a GIF I have of 20,000 blades at 100 FPS. 20,000 is already super cluttered. If you do the math on that one, that would be 40,000 blades of grass at 50 FPS since it scales largely linearly. The code for this project is available for patrons at the moment. There's a link in the description, but if you pay good attention to this video, you may be able to build up your own grass system by yourself. I'll also be releasing the code to the public domain after a year or so. Now it's time to explain how it all works. My goal was to make individually interactable and wind-affected grass that runs fast enough to handle tens of thousands of blades at once. As many of you more experienced Pygame users know, if you just try to render 40,000 images in real time, you'll end up with a laggy mess. This was the first hurdle. Since you can't render that many images, the implementation had to involve some way to reduce the amount of images rendered per frame. My first instinct was to reduce it into a tile system built on a uh, dictionary or hash map for you non-Python users. Turns out that the first instinct worked out. It allows for me to take advantage of the quick lookups for making the blades interactive. I can look up tiles near a force that's affecting grass instead of looking it up every single blade in existence. So here's what we've got so far. We've got a tile system of grass where each tile contains several blades of grass so that not that many tiles have to be rendered and we can quickly look up blades near a specific location. Some of you may have noticed a problem here though. Grouping up blades into tiles doesn't make them render faster on their own. All the individual blades in a tile still have to be processed and rendered on their own. The concept of a tile is only an abstraction from a rendering and data perspective at this point. This is where the true magic of this implementation comes in. Caching. For those of you who don't know what caching is, in this context it's the concept of saving some pre-calculated data for quick reuse later. Caching trades off memory for performance when the same data is used frequently. To properly apply caching to the grass, it's important to consider what possible states the tile abstraction can be in. If each individual blade is interactive with forces and affected by the wind, then there's too many states to cache, right? Well, sort of yes, but there's a couple things to point out here. One, wind creates subtle movement on large scales that affects every blade of grass. Two, local forces, like a person walking through the grass, only affect local areas. In most applications, the majority of the blades will not be close enough to a force to be affected by it. Let's first consider the wind. Since wind is so large scale, you can actually just get away with setting the same rotation for every blade in the tile based on the tile's position without a noticeable visual difference from processing wind on an individual basis. Let's say for an example, there are 30 possible rotations that a blade can have. When wind is applied like this, where every blade in the tile gets the same rotational offset, the amount of states for the entire tile in the wind is also 30. This means that you can render each of the 30 states of the tile and cache it for later use. On a normal frame, that means you can just check the current state of every tile based on the wind and look up the associated image for the tile. So that's the issue of wind solved. It was pretty much just solved by not making each blade behave individually since wind has such a large scale. For forces applied outside of wind, we cannot use this approach though. You would see a clear tile shape in the blade rotations if you use this method for local forces. 
This is why I had the requirement that each blade be individually interactive. However, we're in luck. As stated before, most of the tiles are not being affected by local forces at any given time in most applications. This means we can dedicate more processing power just to the areas being affected by the local forces. Thanks to the tile system, looking up which blades are near a force is a rather quick operation. It functions similarly to my system that allows for thousands of physics particles at once. We just have to look up the tiles that are within the range of the force, and then we can render all the individual blades with the forces offset to a temporary uncached tile image. That's pretty much how it all works conceptually. In summary, in any given frame, most of the blades are being rendered as cached tiles being affected by wind while the blades near forces are being processed and rendered individually. Of course, there's a lot more to it than the base concept I've discussed here. There are other things like reusing blade layouts for multiple tiles to reduce the size of the cache. I also added shading and shadows since the performance is so good and most of the images are cached. I even added caching to individual blade states to make it faster to build up a tile image for a tile being affected by a force. The state management is also a bit more complex than presented in this video since you need to handle multiple forces at once and allow blades to slowly bend back into their original rotations. Once again, the code for my implementation is on my Patreon. There's a link in the description if you're patient. You can also just wait a year or so for me to release the code into the public domain. I'd also like to take a moment to say thanks to all of my current patrons for supporting projects like this one. Thanks. Hopefully I'll see y'all in the next video.